Hello and welcome to Lesson 10-5 on finding the surface area of prisms and cylinders. In tonight's lesson, you're going to be able to find the surface area of prisms, and you're also going to be able to find the surface area of cylinders. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, to figure out what surface area means, you can really just pick apart the word itself. It has the word area, so we're going to be finding the area. But of what? Well, the surfaces of a space figure or a three-dimensional figure. So when we find the surface area, we add together and find the sum of all the different faces and faces of a space figure. And again, those are just measured in square units. Because again, if you find the area of a rectangle, well, that's square. So you just add up all those square units. So we're going to start with prisms. And there's really two ways to do it. One is sometimes people draw, draw out mess. Or the, another way people think about it is they just make sure they find the area of every single surface and add it together. So, for example, we have this rectangular prism. And they drew a net for it over here, which you can certainly use. And they just start finding the area of the different parts. So, for example, I could start with this one side here. And that's on this one right here. So to find that, that's height times the length, which is 10 times 6. So 10 centimeters times 6 centimeters. And I get 60 centimeters squared. Well, if you take a look, there's the exact same thing on the other side, which again is drawn over here. It's still 10 times 6. So again, I could do it again. And you get 60 centimeters squared. And then let's see here. Oh, I have this face here where it looks like 15 centimeters times 6 centimeters. And when I multiply that, that gets 90 centimeters squared. And if I look on top, well, it's the same thing. It's 15 times 6. So they have two of those. And you get, again, 90 centimeters squared. And then I have one more here, and it's this right here, where it's 15 as a length, and the height of it is here, which matches that one, is 10. So I get 150 centimeters squared, and again, there's one behind it. So I do that one again. Now, something I tell my students is if you choose to do it this way, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, if you feel more comfortable doing it this way, go for it. But something to do is just make sure you have all the bases covered. So count up how many bases this figure has to make sure it matches. So here it has one, two, three, four, five, six. So I should have six numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So now I add it together. So I have zero, 10, 19, 28. And I believe I should get 640 centimeters squared. So again, I did that one. Um, but you can definitely check, uh, well check, just to make sure I did it correctly. But sometimes, oh, yeah, excuse me, that should be 600, I don't know what I did there. 600, 10, 19, yeah, 28, 34, 40, there we go, so you carried the 4. So you'd have 600 centimeters squared. That would be your answer. Alright, so that's one way, and again, you could do it with this uh, figure as well. You find the different faces of it. So here, on this one, I have a face that I do 20 feet times 25 feet. And again, you can be working this at the same time. And when you do that, you should get 500 feet squared. Okay, I see this one on this side, which again has a length of 25 and a height of 20. So 25 feet times 20. And you get 500 feet squared. All right, so I have those ones. Then I have to do this bottom one here, which I see is 25 times 12. So 25 feet times 12 feet. And then you go ahead and do that one. So 25 times 12, you get 300 feet squared. So now I have the side faces. Now I have to do those bases here. And I'm going to make you an assumption off of this one, even though it doesn't quite say it for a fact. We're going to say this length or the height or altitude of this triangle is 20. 
Well, and how do we find the area of a triangle? You don't just do base times height. You also have to divide by 2. So remember, whenever you have bases that are like triangles, you take 12 feet times the height of 20 feet, and then make sure you divide it by 2 in the end. So 12 times 20 divided by 2 is 120 feet squared. So each one of those are 120 feet, and we have two of them. Alright, so if I needed to add all this up, I have my basis. Let's make sure I have the total number I need. So I have one here, two, three, four, five. So I have the two bases and then the three lateral bases. So then you add them up. So I have one, 500 plus 500 plus 300 plus 120 plus 120. You should get 1,540 feet squared. There we go. So that's one way you can find the surface area of the figure. The other way is using the idea of lateral faces or the lateral area. And then when we talked about the lateral faces, those were all the ones that are along the sides of the bases, of the two bases of a prism. All right? And what you end up doing is you find the sum of those lateral faces of that prism, and then you just multiply it uh, by the height because that base area is equal to the surface area. So what you do is whatever the base is, so you find the base, and you add up its perimeter, so all the way around it. So for example, on this one, they're showing it to you. Here's the perimeter of the base. We have two bases that make up triangles. And right along it, we have those lateral bases. And we've talked before about if you unfolded them, they would make a long rectangle. So what they're telling you to do is find the sum of those three or four or five sets, however many there are, and that gives you its total length. And then you times it by its height, and that gives you the area of all this in one piece. All right? So when you do the lateral area, another, it's just another way to find surface area. You can find the lateral area, so find the perimeter and times it by the height. Then you just add in the area of those two bases, and that's what's going to give it to you. So again, you can think of surface area now as a lateral area plus two times those area of the bases. And you can notice we used a big B for the area of the bases. So when you see a big B in here, it usually means the area of the base. And again, we're timesing by two because there are two bases. So I'm going to show you how this works. All right, so number one says find the lateral or find the surface area of this rectangular prism. And again, you could do it how we've been doing those other two problems, take base by base. Nothing wrong with that. But here's another way. So first, I'm going to find the lateral area. And I take a look, well, this rectangle here is my base. And I see that my perimeter, well, I have 6 inches, 5 inches, so that means the other side is 6 inches, and the other, fourth side of it, is 5 inches. So when you add that together, the total perimeter of that is 22 inches, because 6 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5 is 22. Now, I times that by 20, which is the height, to find that lateral area. And I get 440 inches squared. There we go. Now, I just found the area of all those lateral bases, so all these long rectangles here. So step two now is I need to find the area of these bases. Well, so I take a look at what the bases are. Well, the bases are rectangles. How do I find the area of a rectangle? I multiply it times on what? So I take six inches, times 5 inches, and well, the area of one base is 30 inches. So the area of 2 is, so 2 times 30 inches is 60 inches. And excuse me, those should be squared. So 60 inches squared for the 2. So now I have the area of the two bases and the area of just um, the lateral. So now I add them together. 440 inches squared plus 60 inches squared is equal to 500 inches squared. That's my area. And again, you can go through it step by step. If you want to, go ahead and just find the area of every single face. You should get the same answer either way. Alright, so now we're into the second piece of the lesson. And this is really only one way to find it. So you can't do just the area, just 
spaces anymore. Because again, with a cylinder, it's that whole rectangular part that makes up the faces of it. Or the one long rectangle that if you cut in half, I should say, it would make a rectangle. And how we do this is, again, we talk about the lateral area and then adding in the two bases. So to find the lateral area of the cylinder, you do 2 times pi times radians times a half. All right? So that's your first step. And then from there, you just add in those two bases. So add in the two times those bases. So we're going to go ahead and start with the lateral area. So 2 times pi times radius times height. So I'm going to just go ahead and put in the radius right away, which is 3 and 5 tenths centimeter. And the height is 11 and 5 tenths centimeters. And you'll notice I just put pi at the end, and there is a reason I did that. I'll show you why at the end. So now I multiply 2 times 3 and 5 tenths times 11 and 5 tenths, and I get 80 and 5 tenths pi centimeters squared. So that's my lateral area. So now let's go ahead and do the area of my bases. All right. Well, I know the area of one base is pi r squared. So I have a circle because there's circles. That's why we use pi r squared. So radius is 3 and 5 tenths centimeters squared times pi. So 3 and 5 tenths times 3 and 5 tenths. And you get 12 and 25 hundredths pi. So that's one circle. All right? But again, we have two of them. So you can times this by two, or just add in another 12 and 25 hundredths. Up to you. And you end up with 24 and 50 hundredths pi centimeters squared. So now what you do is you have your two side uh, pieces here. You add them together. So I have 80 and 5 tenths pi centimeters squared plus 24 and 50 hundredths pi centimeters squared. So if you add those together, you get 105 pi centimeters squared. Now this would be the exact if they wanted the approximate. Again, you just do 105 times 3 and 14 hundredths. And you'd get 329 and 7 tenths centimeters squared. Now the reason that I saved the pies till the end is so you didn't have to deal with bigger decimal numbers as you went through. It just makes it easier if you wait to do all the pies until the end. So let's try this one now. It's the same idea, but um, well, just a different problem of it. So find the surface area of the cylindrical water tank. So again, find the lateral area and then add in those two bases. So let's go ahead and do it. And again, you could actually be working ahead of me if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to, just pause me all together right now and then try to solve it by yourself. And then when you're all done, go through these same steps with me. It's entirely up to you. So 2 pi, but I'm going to skip. So 8 times the height, which is 15. And again, these should all have feet in here times pi, and you get, well, 2 times 8 times 15 is 240 pi feet squared. All right, so that's the lateral. So now we go ahead and do the bases, which again, the base here is a circle. How do we find the area of a circle? Is pi r squared. So my radius here is 8, so 8 squared is 64 pi. So, my lateral area, I have 240 pi feet squared, plus one base, which is 64 pi feet squared. And then I have my other base, because there's one at the bottom, which is the same, 64 times pi feet squared. So add them together, so 240 plus 64 plus 64, and you get 368 pi feet squared. So the approximate area, so when we times it by 3 and 14 hundredths, we get 1,155 and 52 hundredths feet squared. That is your answer. There we go.
So that's your lesson for tonight. Tonight we talked about how to find the area of prisms by either just using, um, well, just the different faces and adding them together, or using the lateral area. And with cylinders, again, there's really only one way to do it. We find the area of that um, side piece or those ladder face, and then you just add in those two bases. So you have a great night. I will see you in class tomorrow.